Howdy everyone. Now, one or two people have been complaining recently that I'm not reviewing enough lenses for digital SLR cameras anymore. Well, here's something interesting for you all. It's the fastest aperture 35mm lens ever made for a digital SLR camera, the Curly 35mm f1.2 for full frame or APS-C cameras. And of course, you can use an adapter to put it onto a mirrorless camera too, if you like. It's a manual focus lens from China, and currently it can be found on Amazon in the UK for about £560, or about $700 in the US. It comes in Canon EF mount, Nikon F mount, and a special version for Sony E mount, which has a built-in adapter. I'd like to thank the Pergear company who distribute this lens for lending me a copy for review. Although, as usual, this is a totally independent review and not sponsored by them in any way. My personal favourite focal length is 35mm. On a full frame camera, it gives you a nice wide angle, but it also gets just close enough that you can pick out your subject quite well and even get some background separation if your aperture is wide enough. So, it's a very versatile wide angle and that maximum aperture of f1.2 is fantastically wide, letting in lots of light for shooting indoors and in dark conditions and getting out of focus backgrounds. If you're using an APS-C camera, then this lens's focal length is the full frame equivalent of about 55mm, so it'll give you a tighter and yet still very versatile standard field of view. The depth of field is deepened a bit to the equivalent of about an f2 lens on full frame, if you're using it on an APS-C camera. Let's see about the lens's build quality then. The word I would use to describe it is solid. It looks and feels like it's been cast out of solid titanium. It might make a handy weapon if someone's trying to steal your camera. The solid metal camera mount and lens hood mount both feel slightly edgy. The filter thread is 72mm wide. It's a bit larger than other 35mm lenses, unsurprisingly, considering its wider aperture and with it being designed for full frame cameras. It weighs about 700 grams or 1.5 pounds. Just look at the size of those huge front and rear glass elements. There is a lot of glass in this thing. I quite like its design though. While I was shooting with it, people were asking me if I was using a Zeiss lens. Now, as I mentioned, it's a fully manual lens, manual focus and manual aperture. The manual focus ring turns extremely smoothly and very precisely. Focusing is no problem at all, with a little practice. The aperture mechanism is quite nice too. You can set the aperture ring to turn smoothly, which some people prefer for video work, or with gentle clicks, which is generally preferred by still photographers so they know where they are with the aperture. The clicks are very gentle though, and as you stop the aperture down darker, they become less frequent. The lens hood that comes supplied is really excellent, made of metal and with dark fabric on the inside, if only all lenses came with one of these. Well, let's see now if the lens's image quality lives up to its very good build quality. Today I'll be testing it on a full frame camera, my 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At f1.2, in the middle of the image, the situation is a little complex. Contrast is a little bit low, and I noticed a red colour cast to the images at this wide aperture. However, there is some quite usable sharpness there, although there's also some ghosting on strongly contrasting edges. In normal use, I found the sharpness at f1.2 to be fine, actually, as you can see in this picture here. Anyway, that's the middle of the image. Over in the corners, I'm pleased to say that that quite usable sharpness is holding out, which is encouraging to see at this wide aperture. Stop down to f1.4 for a tiny bit more contrast in the corners and back in the middle. Stop down to f2 though for sharp quality in the middle and a further improvement in the corners, although a little chromatic aberration is making itself known now right in the edges. We see good sharpness there at f2.8 and f4, and the red colour cast we seemed to see earlier has now gone. If you stop down between f5.6 and f11, you'll see very good sharpness in the corners. 
So, technically, while the lens isn't as sharp as Canon or Sigma's 35mm lenses, it can offer just enough sharpness at f1.2 to make it useful. Because of contrast issues, the lens didn't really like my test chart, but out in the field, I was always finding myself happy enough with its sharpness. Alright, let's really challenge the lens by seeing what it can do on an APS-C camera. I've adapted it onto my little 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3. At f1.2, in the middle of the image, that ghosting on contrasting edges is stronger than ever, and the red colour cast is now very noticeable. The corners of the image are very soft. If you stop down to f2, then the corners will be about the same, but the middle of the image is now greatly improved. Stop down to f2.8 for good image quality in the middle, but the corners are still having huge trouble. However, that red colour cast is now gone. At f5.6, the softness and chromatic aberration remains, although at f8 and f11, the image is a bit clearer. So, we have to conclude that this lens is not really suitable for use on a modern APS-C camera. It's clearly designed for full-frame camera owners. Alright then, let's see about vignetting and distortion on a full-frame camera. We can see here that the lens projects moderate barrel distortion, which might be noticeable in some pictures. The vignetting at f1.2, predictably, is rather strong. Those corners look pretty dark. Stop down to f2 or f2.8 to tame it down. When it comes to close-up image quality, at f1.2, the lens is a bit soft at its closest focus distance. Stop down to f2 and image quality is a lot better, and at f2.8, close-up image quality is sharp. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. The lens performs pretty well here, actually. Contrast remains good, even when the brightest lights are right in there. And there is some flaring, but it's not too obtrusive. And finally, bokeh. Here is an area where the lens rather shines. Not only can this lens give you a uniquely narrow depth of field, but the actual quality of those out-of-focus backgrounds is really nice and smooth almost all the time. And so is the quality of the bokeh in the foreground, too. Your more artistic pictures will come out looking very nice with this lens. Overall, testing out the curly 35mm f1.2 has been a pretty interesting experience for me. It is a lens with great build quality, if you don't mind focusing manually, and it sure looks the business. Its technical image quality is a bit questionable. There are issues with colour and contrast at wide apertures, and it's not suitable for use on an APS-C camera. But honestly, I used the lens for a couple of weeks on my full-frame Canon 6D, and I was actually satisfied enough with the lens's sharpness at f1.2 in real-world pictures. I found myself getting really nice shots nearly all the time, and that is this lens's greatest strength. The narrow depth of field it can offer, and the lovely quality of its bokeh, make this a bit of an artist's lens. Its images at f1.2 really jump out nicely, and draw you in. If sharpness is your top priority, then this isn't really the lens for you. But if you own a full-frame camera, and you want unique and artistic images to give you a little edge over competing f1.4 lenses, then you could work with this curly instrument really well.